I feel very yellow today, like a hopeful yellow, not like a mellow yellow. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Bash Harry and I make new videos every other Saturday, sometimes about beauty, lifestyle, fashion, or whatever wave of inspiration hits me, just like this video. Today I wanted to talk about my streams of income, specifically as a media person, a media broadcaster, content creator, whatever you want to call it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call this passive income because it's still a job that I have to do, go out to the field and do stuff. But this is how I've made a living doing stuff in media. Not necessarily stable income, but income nonetheless. So over the past five years, I've built a few income streams that have been really good to me, especially since during those five years, I didn't really have a lot of stability until now. And I'll talk about that a bit later on. So I have about five to seven income streams right now because I like being busy. Like I genuinely love doing a lot of work. It makes me feel really fulfilled, which I know is very bad to strongly tie yourself to such a capitalist idea of being busy and it just hurts someone in the long run. But that's another video for another day. And two, most importantly, I think diversifying your income streams really helps pad the flow and your living. If I don't get paid in one stream from one month, it's okay because I can still rely on the others to help out. For this video, I actually calculated the past year of income. So from June 2020 until June 2021, because working in media means very inconsistent pay. Some months I do get paid, some months I don't. So this is more of a holistic general idea of how much I get paid on average in percentages. This, this, does that make sense? I hope it does. I know a lot of these videos on YouTube usually focus on being a YouTuber or influencer or things online that helps them gain or earn money like merch or AdSense. I don't have merch. I don't have a lot of AdSense money. So this is how I vary my income streams with the small amount of subscribers that I actually have. So if you want to know, just keep on watching. So the first thing everyone wants to talk about, especially when you're on YouTube and you have AdSense is how much does AdSense pay you or pay me as a small creator with maybe only about 4,000 subscribers. By comparison to a lot of YouTubers here, I make very little money. In fact, it only calculates to about 3% of my income. I put this in because even though I make very little money off of AdSense, it's still okay-ish. Like, honestly, it's okay. There's not a lot of ads on my videos, probably because I have a very local or regional audience that doesn't get a lot of ads. So it depends on your region, your audience, etc. You have to reach 1,000 subscribers and have 4,000 watch hours. Personally, it was really hard for me to get. I only got it maybe last year after five years on YouTube. YouTube right now isn't really what I would consider a good source of income for me personally. YouTube is just a place for me to have fun, enjoy myself, and make stupid videos like this that could potentially help somebody. I would also include this 3% with my Patreon, which if you want to check it out, please do. Um, you get your name at the end of my videos and I really, really appreciate it. Helps me out in so many ways, like I can afford having music and nice lighting. So it helps pay for that, but as well, Patreon is only a small way that you can earn money online. Also, I should note, I get paid through PayPal and PayPal doesn't work in Brunei. So that money goes into those fixed expenses for YouTube or my blog or content creation, things like that. A lot of people can make money off of online work like Patreon and AdSense. It just doesn't work for me personally and that's fine. There are definitely other ways you can diversify your income without just focusing on YouTube and online stuff. So the second way that I actually make money, which takes about 12% of my income is as a writer, actually. I have a book out. It's called Oh My Darling, Words and Books I'll Never Write. It's available for $18 in bookstores here in Brunei if you want to 
check it out. I work with a publisher and I get a small percentage of the sales, which is always really great. I didn't just publish a book though, I also work in media as a script writer. Um, some scripts I've written were the Bungsu Story, the remake of the pilot of Bungsu Story, and an upcoming series called I Want to Be Famous. You know, it was definitely one of the more enjoyable scripts that I've written because it was such a collaborative process. So personally, this is my favorite way of earning money because I love writing. It's something that I've always been interested in and it's a great way for me to kind of expand my skills and it's a great way for me to kind of help people out with their own scripts and their own ideas and develop it into something that is very interesting and being put on screen. It is a different kind of media, admittedly, because it's mostly behind the scenes work, writing scripts, trying to figure out storylines and ideas and characters, and it's really fun. Not everyone is interested in being a writer and that's okay. It's just one of the things that I love doing and I hope, I hope I can continue. My third income stream is and I'm gonna put this in quotations, is being a talent. This one is about 15% of my income over the past year. I put this in quotations because uh, it feels weird. It does, like not in a bad way, it's just, it's what it's called. Talent equals being a model slash actor in advertisement or films. I've done a few talent gigs before for pretty small brands to very, very big brands. It's fun. Like genuinely, I really enjoy being on set and having fun and meeting with such great crew who know exactly what their vision is. And I get to be there and just, enjoy myself. I don't know if you can make a living off of just being a talent. I do know a few people who have and it works out pretty well for them. Personally, I do it for fun and I just like the environment. Most people that I've worked with on a set have been amazing and sweet and kind and it's just a good time all around. My fourth income stream I think is the most obvious if you are an influencer because it's the most influencer stream of income and that is sponsorships. You don't need a big following to get sponsorships and I started getting them maybe when I had less than 2,000 followers back in 2015, 2016. And honestly, it's been great. I know there's so many other YouTube videos that talks about how to get sponsorships, how to earn money through sponsorships and stuff like that and really utilize that following. Rather for me, I just try to build a community and promote things that I know people would enjoy and that I personally enjoy. I want to be a bit more strict with what I choose to promote. I'm very adamant that I won't promote any like skin whitening brands, but with this video and as I've said many, 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 many times before, it's all up to you. If you want to learn how to grow and utilize your platform, I am not the person to ask. Rather, I think I would recommend you watch some YouTube videos. I'll have some links down below if you're interested. This is probably about 30% of my income. I wouldn't consider it the most consistent, but when it happens, it happens. And when it does, it's pretty decent. My fifth income stream is definitely like the biggest, I would say, but also the most interesting. And that is being a TV show host. So if you didn't know, I am a TV show presenter on a show called Future Wave on RTB. We're currently filming season two. We wrapped up series one, season one last year. And that was about 40 people we had to interview. And this year it's 15. I do it on the weekends, meeting and interviewing some really, really, really cool people here in Brunei. And it's really enjoyable. I get to meet, like I said, so many awesome, cool people and just have a blast. The way that I got this job was I auditioned back in 2019, very, very late 2019, I think back in December. I auditioned, I got the part, and then in February, we started filming. All in all, it was a really good time. The one thing is sometimes the hours are really whack, but you get that with a lot of jobs and you take what you can get. My biggest tip, if you wanted to be a TV show host or presenter or just be on camera, practice your public speaking, practice the way that you talk, 
to people. Make sure your voice is enunciated and nice and clear. I feel like being a TV presenter that's going to be on local TV, it's very different from the way that I talk to you on YouTube. This that I'm doing right now is a controlled set. I know how the lighting looks like, I know how my makeup looks like, I know what the camera settings are. That I can control and I can mess up as many times as I want and I will edit it out. But when it comes to being on TV with an actual set with people who want you to be on your best behavior and your best speaking voice, that's a bit different. The pressure is very different and that's something that I had to learn with every episode that we filmed. If you want to be a TV presenter or learn how to host, keep up to date with social media and learn how to network. As for the percentage of being a TV show host, it's only about 20% and the reason why it's relatively low is because I only get paid maybe seasonally when there's a TV show coming out and when I need to film, which is obviously why I need to diversify my income. My final stream of income which I think has been my most consistent is being a radio DJ. Yeah, I am a radio DJ, which, huh, very surprising for me in this turn of my life. Honestly, don't know if I have the voice for being a DJ, but I'm not gonna lie, it is really, really fun. So if you tune into Palangi 91.4 and 91.0 FM, I am a DJ for them been a DJ for almost a year now and it's been really really fun. Being a radio DJ I get paid per hour which is great because more hours equals more ka -ching. but since I do have a full-time job I'm not able to get as many hours in. Maybe 15 to 20 hours a month which is it's fine by me. If you're interested in being a radio DJ I highly highly recommend it. It's really fun and honestly it's mostly just me sitting down chilling and listening to music. The one con I would say is that your hours can be very awkward so like sometimes I have to wake up at 4 30 to get to the booth for a 6 a.m start or I finish the night at 11 p.m. and by the time I get home, I'm just so tired and I still have work the next day. That's something that a lot of people might want to look into. I personally really, really enjoy it. I like the hours, I like the fun. It's just like having a conversation by yourself if you're alone in the booth. But obviously your voice got to suit the slot, so you just got to learn on the job and keep up and practice. A lot of the jobs that I get is a lot of practicing at the moment, learning and well, that's all jobs really, isn't it? <laughs> Those are my income streams. I think there were about five to seven. Um, I'll leave the proper number. I'll leave it to editing me. I want to note that these are not passive incomes. They're, they're not. Each of these media income streams takes a different type of work, whether that is being on TV, on camera, or writing. But nevertheless, I do hope this video was really, really helpful for you. I personally never thought I could have a career in media, much less um, several careers in media. I am very grateful the job is fulfilling and I enjoy it a lot. I wouldn't take up so many jobs if I didn't enjoy it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and all the other stuff. Let me know what videos you want to see next because that would be great. I make new videos every other Saturday and that's it. That's it from me. Okay, bye. <laughs>